hugely experienced English referee Terry Smith brings them together. Stop. 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 And nothing much between James Moore of Ireland in the red and Craig McEwen of Scotland in the blue. Good countering there by the taller of the two, the big Scott Craig McEwen. And that may just put him into the lead. It was interesting to hear the Scottish corner say slow down the feet a little bit and uh, increase the punch rate. I'd certainly agree with increasing the punch rate, but McEwen's strength is his movement, and uh, I would encourage him to, to keep doing what he's doing, but obviously to uh, throw more punches, yes, but his movement is his strength. He's a very, very skillful boxer, and I wouldn't... Um, I certainly wouldn't give instructions, really, for him to slow his feet down. Well, I'm surprised that James Moore is actually leading because I thought at the start of the round uh, Greg McEwen landed with a good little one-two combination and might have picked up a point, but thus we can see the vagaries of this computer scoring system. But Moore from Arklow and County Wicklow, now 25 years old, bronze medalist in the World Championships in Belfast a couple of summers ago. Keeping his nose in front and McEwen again landed with a, a right hand which uh, didn't seem to count. Left from McEwen wasn't too far away. 45 seconds to go to the end of the third and then two more minutes. This was always going to be very close between two pretty accomplished boxers. A world bronze medalist against a Commonwealth Games bronze medalist. McEwen, you may well remember, lost to Stop. Paul Stop. Smith in the semi-final oh, yeah. in the welterweight division, or the light middleweight division, I should say, in Manchester last year. Well, this has been a better round for James Moore, mainly because he's quickened those feet up a little bit and he's he's really nailed Craig McEwen with some good shots uh, as he's going forward, quick with the feet, much more accurate with the punches, and he had a good opening, 10 or 15 seconds of this round. He got two, got home with a two or three good shots, and that seems to be the pattern throughout the, throughout the round. Well, McEwen has come back very well indeed and Stop. has turned round an 8-7 deficit to a 10-8 lead going into the last round and the last 20 seconds of that third round were hugely significant for Craig McEwen. No, I don't want you running away, I want you buddy, I want you buddy, give him plenty, do you hear me? Do you hear me? Good, good. Now come on. John McKay Let's getting pretty again. animated there right. in the Scots corner. Okay. McEwen now 21 years it. old, has had uh, close to uh, 200 bouts. So, all to box for, but what a very significant last 20 seconds of the penultimate round it was for Craig McEwen. So, the big fella in blue, the Scots champion. And he's been Scots champion for the past three years against the reigning Irish champion, who's had a similar record, James Moore, the former Irish international skipper, world bronze medalist from two years ago in Belfast, coming forward, and he knows he's behind, and he's closed the gap now. And this is going to be a cracking last Stop. minute and a half or so. Moore goes back into the lead. The rich was never going to be more than a point or two in this. No, this could go right well down to the wire. Moore getting through the... He's starting each round very quickly, Moore, and that's... It surprised um, McEwen just, just momentarily Great. at the start of each round. Stop. James Moore started much more quickly, and he's got on with a couple of shots very early on in the round, and that could be the Stop. difference, literally. But McEwen, he's just got to stay on that back foot and start throwing more twos and threes, Jim, rather than that single punch. I just get the feeling that Moore's got a little bit on the anxious side. He's trying to force this, and if he does, McEwen might pick him off, but Moore is very experienced, and he's also very strong. A little caution from England's Terry Smith to McEwen for holding. And McEwen's pulled it back. Well, what a final minute we're going to have. One point, I think, could separate them. Hey! It's good tactics from Moore trying to back McEwen up on those ropes because when he's on the ropes, he's literally got nowhere else to go and he shouldn't be there, McEwen. He's got to get off them ropes and get back to the centre of the ring where he tends to command from. Well, McEwen landed with a very good southpaw right hand and that's uh, put him back into the lead again and Moore's going to have to force it. Three quarters of a minute to go. We always knew this was going to be tight and McEwen's gone two points up. Good right hand to the body from James Moore. And he's pulled it back to a single point. Now, is this going to cost him? Oh, that's going to cost him two points. And that means that Moore will get two points added on to his score. So the Irishman is going to be 14-13 up with half a minute to go. Persistent holding. 
They've got the scoreboard adjusted. They're very slow on it. McEwen gets in with a good left and another good shot from McEwen. And he may well have leveled it, and he has. What a finish. If it stays at 14-14, it's going to go to a card back. Now he's doing it again, but Terry Smith has not penalised him. Left from McEwen, might have scored. He's got ahead. Moore's got him with the right. What a good finish this is. And despite conceding the two points, McEwen might just be good enough to hold on. Moore gets him another right hand, but McEwen has won it. He conceded two points for persistent holding, but he has come back and he has pulled off perhaps one of his best performances and he's denied the Irishman James Moore a third successive Four Nations title. Well, Moore jabbed and there was that round the corner, right hand into the body and you could see how McEwen puffed, but he kept his composure. Four Nations champion at welterweight, 69 kilograms, with a score of 16-15. Red corner, Moore. Well, it's gone to Moore. I thought Your appreciation, the Craig McEwen of at the end That it had gone to Craig McEwen. Well, the scoreboard, you, Jim, you have to say, is very, very slow, isn't it? I mean, toward, right on the bell of that contest, it looked like McEwen was in front, but obviously, there must have been punches land literally on the bell, and which didn't register. But that's disappointing for McEwen. James, three times champion, but do you feel like you've got out of jail? Um, I was taking the fight to him, you know, he's a very, very good counter puncher. Had to walk right to the last round, you know, it's hard to tag him. He wasn't standing with me that much, but I felt when I was inside, you know, he was holding me a bit, not letting me walk the way I normally would when I'm inside, so I'm happy enough, you know, they told me in the corner at last, you know. At this stage then, Ireland ahead in the medal stakes with a total of three gold medals. They're looking to add to that with middleweight prospect Andy Lee, perhaps the brightest star in this tournament, and he's taking on Neil Perkins of England in a middleweight final. A very good opening four minutes for the young man in the blue vest representing Ireland in this 75-kilogram final, the middleweight final. Andy Lee from the St. Francis Club in Limerick with a decent lead over his English opponent, Neil Perkins, the reigning ABA champion, and more importantly, the defending Four Nations champion, a title he won in impressive style in Killarney last year when he stopped both Matt Allen from Wales and the highly rated Kenny Egan from Ireland. So I think everybody justifiably that he has been impressed with young Andy Lee. Yeah, I mean, he's boxing superbly on that back foot. Um, totally in command and he's picking Perkins off isn't he so Perkins he must you heard Ian Irwin say you've got to keep tiny you know create a small target get close up to this man try and push this fella back with two phase attacks by just standing off him you're just allowing him to use his advantages of the height and reach and you get, he's getting picked off Perkins at this stage he's got to be a little bit quick with the feet uh, Perkins came through once again to retain his uh, English ABA title he stopped uh, Gary Barr from Berkeley, who had a bad eye in the fourth. And Perkins finding it almost impossible to get inside this fast-moving, quickly, quickly acting young Irishman who's opened up a gap with a minute to go to the end of the third of uh, some seven points. Perkins coming, storming in, head down, trying to rough up Lee and his head in the face of the Irishman. 40 seconds remaining, seven points between them. It's going to be difficult to see Perkins unless he picks up one or two right at the end of this round, giving himself anything like a decent shot of retaining his title. One of the five defending champions from Killarney last year here in Cardiff. Andy Lee certainly reminds me of an old uh, boxer from East Germany, Henry Mask, who was a total counter-puncher South Pole. He used to box on the back. Very similar to this, just wait for you, wait for you to come in and make the mistake. And look at that for a bit of variation from Andy Lee, that uppercut. Andy Mask went on to become a world champion on the professional stage, and I think Andy Lee has similar ambitions. Well, I mean, he's only young, and he's got a lot of talent, Andy Lee, there's no doubt about that. Another good round from Andy Lee, and Perkins with a seven point gap to try to overcome has got well an awful lot on his plate you've got no chance of getting on the target too missing with too many shots he used those advantages i think the message coming through from the irish corner to the youngster from the st francis club in limerick scott's referee Willie Burns waits until 
all the corner men have uh, left the ring. So Neil Perkins has to come forward and he's got to try to overwhelm him. Well, the young man in blue representing Ireland in this uh, 75 kilogram final in the last round if he's going to retain the title he won last year and it doesn't look Richie as if he's going to be able to do that no I mean he's, he's up against a very skillful boxer here in Andy Lee and uh, Andy Lee if you notice what he's doing I mean he's waiting for, for, for Perkins to come in to make the mistakes he then delivers his own shots and then he gets back to the long-range boxing he doesn't get caught up on the inside he doesn't fight Neil Perkins's fight he fights his own fight which is long-range seven points between them Lee tall and rangy and remember just 18 years old the second youngest man in the whole tournament here we had something in the region of uh, 30 defending or 30 uh, in national champions who've come here champions of the four countries remember Lee nice right hand and left round the corner once again and that huge reach of his very important against the chunky Perkins under a minute to go nine points between them and Andy Lee heading towards a uh, victory and giving Ireland another champion yeah good all-round performance from Andy Lee you have to say he's shown some excellent skills and also shown some nice uppercuts and look at there he's off the ropes you see he's not staying on the ropes he's back to the middle of the ring and uh, Perkins just losing the plot a little bit here but it's been a hard job for him tonight he's in against a talented boxer Perkins not too far away with the left right at, oh that was a good shot by Perkins maybe not delivered cleanly with the knuckle part of the glove picked out in white but 10 points between them and Lee has never been behind at any stage he's opened up a gap now of 11 points and he's moving very easily and this is a considerable talent that the Irish have unearthed Perkins now knows it's all over for him and all he can do is try to finish it off as best he can and he smiles and says well done young fellow and James Moore Ireland senior coach will be thrilled with that performance by the teenager from Limerick because Andy Lee has won this 75 kilogram title at a canter Andy you got the result you wanted was it the performance you wanted oh, no one there what I wanted it's all right now like on a big occasion you like to perform well but I don't know I don't know what happened to him. He's awkward. He was so poor. I know he was strong. I just didn't know you have one of them nights. It was us all. It was all down to myself, really, you know. I wonder, you came in here into the tournament as the big, hot prospect. Did that get to you in the end? No, no, I never felt pressure at all. I never... Pressure doesn't affect me at all. It's just, just one of them nights, I suppose, you know. Have a bad night, come, you have a good night, you have your bad nights. Well, I don't know what... You know, like, he was just awkward, so poor. It's a big occasion, all that matters is the result in the end, you know. You, no one's going to remember how you box when three or four months down the line, no one's going to remember who's got the gold medal. And that'll be Andy Lee, you know what I mean? So. Congratulations. Thanks very much. Thank you. So, Andy Lee giving the Irish team another gold medal there, and they were threatening to run away with it. But Englishman Tony Davis pulled one back in a light heavyweight division, beating the favoured Irishman Kenneth Egan, 16 points to 11. On to the heavyweight final now then, and it's Ireland's Alan Reynolds against Andrew Young of Scotland, their last chance for a gold medal in this year's Four Nations tournament. Oh. The defending Four Nations champion, in this the heavyweight division, is the man in the red vest representing Ireland from the St. Joseph's Club in Sligo in the west of Ireland is Alan Reynolds, Alan Reynolds now 25 years old, and his opponent, the man whom he stopped last year in Killarney in the first series, is the... Scottish Commonwealth Games representative from Inverness, Andy Young, four times the Scottish heavyweight champion. Reynolds in the last couple of years has moved up from being Irish light heavyweight champion to take over the mantle of his older brother, Stephen. So it's Reynolds ready to up Stop. in the red Stop. against Young from Scotland in the blue. Stop. Referee Bob Pooley from England. Young had a hugely disappointing Commonwealth Games last year when he, he seemed to freeze in his opening contest. That was a good right hand from Reynolds. And that has uh, opened up a gap of some two points. Reynolds looks leaner and fitter and looks very strong. Young, the taller of the two by some distance, and he's got to maximise that great reach of his, Richie. Yeah, and, and Young has got to keep his guard nice and tight tonight because uh, Reynolds is a big hitter and uh, he's looking to step in with that right hand through the guard of uh, Young, so oh. we've got to keep that guard nice and tight and nice and high. The 
referee just warning Andy Young about slapping. You've got to hit with the knuckle part of the glove, which is what Reynolds has been doing. That was a good left from uh, the Scot. 6-2, the right hand from Young wasn't too far away. Good shot to the body once again by Reynolds, who forced a, a retirement in the semi-final from the English heavyweight champion, the Royal Marine, Mick O'Connell, who didn't come out for the second round. In early through the tile, a good body shot and a little left to follow. That's going to be an eight count against Andy Young. Reynolds has specialised with some great body shots. Eight. And that's what caused the problems for uh, Mick O'Connell. 20 seconds remaining. Reynolds hoping to finish this if he can in the opening round. It was a, a nasty bruising to the eye in Killarney last year, which uh, brought victory. Stop. And what a good finish to that round by Reynolds. 11-4 up at the end of a blistering two minutes from the Irishman. Yeah, some superb body, body work going in there from Reynolds. Excellent. Now Reynolds forcing the pace, move wonderfully, little short right hand, and you can see the grimace of pain because the head clears from a head shot, but the body shots really do hurt. Oh, mm. certainly. I mean, he will feel that probably in the next round, and then he followed it up there with a lovely little left hook, and Young actually did well to get up from that. Take away any silly shot. That's what you've got to do. All right? Don't let him get in too close. Don't let him get the right hand go. Come on. Let's go. Where we go? Come on. So they come together again at the start of the second round. Alan Reynolds in red, the defending Four Nations heavyweight champion. Having had his man Andrew Young from Scotland in the blue down for an eight count in the first round. Will be anxious to try to finish this if he can, as he did last year in Killarney. There's another good right hand into the body by Reynolds and a, a right hand to the chin. Well, you can see now that Reynolds, the, the confident, he's just booming with confidence, isn't he? Just looking for that, that um, those body shots now. What Young has got to start doing, Jim, is maybe just sitting back a little bit and uh, Stop. timing the uppercut. That's the Stop. probably the punch that he's got to start throwing because Reynolds is looking for the body shot and he's got to oh. go downstairs, obviously, to throw that punch. So Young, if he can just start throwing a few uppercuts, who knows? Reynolds just might walk, walk onto one. Well, 15-4, this is an 11-point gap now for the Irishman. Jabbing very nicely, trying to tee his man up. You do feel for that right hand, either the head or body. Better work by Young. Got to get in and out and away again. Was beaten in his first contest in Manchester last year in the Commonwealth Games by the Welsh representative. Andy Young. Reynolds digging into the body. There's a good right hand. That's another good Two. shot by Reynolds. And that's a second eight four, count. Remember, it's five, any more than two in one six, round and any more than seven, four overall. And eight, that's going to be the contest four. ended. Young says he's fine, but he's 13 points adrift right round the corner once again. Left from Reynolds. He really is going for this. Oh, he's got him again with a good right hand. And Stop. Reynolds really has picked up the pace. Cool. Still 30 seconds to go, and he stopped it. He stopped it. Reynolds has won it. He's retained his title. And the rest of the Irish team giving him the applause that he certainly enjoys and on this occasion he certainly deserves well he was far too strong Richie wasn't he yeah that that's it in a nutshell he was much too strong for young fair play to young there he was still battling at the end but it was the body shots that were doing the damage and it was literally a matter of time and uh, it was a great decision for the referee but here I mean it's just literally a matter of time look at that right hand there going in from Reynolds excellent shot and uh, he didn't really recover from that and I think it was the right decision by the referee